Well, hi there. I'm going to show you how to do my twisted thistle stitch. Twisted thistle is made up of a row of two stitches. It's um, a really nice stitch. I've used it for all kinds of things. It's tight enough with the right yarn and the right loom that you can use it to knit a blanket, um, well, a shawl, a hat. It's nice in the round as well. Um, a cowl. Um, pretty much anything. A poncho, you name it, you can knit it with this. It does have a tendency to curl, so you're going to want to do some kind of an edge treatment and some kind of a treatment um, on the beginning and the end. But I will give you some tips. It's just a stitch video, but I will give you some tips so that you can just pick it up and make a project with it. I'm using a Cindy Wood Loom. I have 44 pegs on this loom. It's a 5 8 inch gauge and I'm using a bulky yarn and the yarn I'm using is King Cole Riot Chunky and of course it's a chunky yarn, a number 5 yarn, um, 100 grams. It is 30% wool, 70% acrylic and the color is Juniper Berry. And um, I guess that's colored juniper berries are. <laughs> but you have this really light peachy pink a, and a deeper pink and red and gray and light gray, white. A lot of pretty colors in here. And uh, this is a bit of the dark gray sticking out. So there you go. And what I did was I marked my two end pegs so that I would be able to know that I was treating them different and where they were. And here, if you're making a big project with this stitch, you might want to have more end pegs. And I'm doing garter stitch on the end, but you want to, might want to have more end pegs and do a non-curling stitch to pre prevent it from curling. For the cast on, I did a crochet chain cast on and I will have that cast on linked on my channel so you'll be able to uh, see how to do this and because of the kind of project I'm making here I wasn't too worried about it curling so I just did one row of knit one row of purl before I started into the stitch but if I was having this as a standalone I would have done at least two rows uh, I would have done uh, two sets of knit and purl so I would have done a knit, a purl, a knit, and a purl for a small project like this. On a bigger project, I might do up to five rows. And the same on the side, up to five rows of garter if this was a blanket. So there's some tips for you. Okay, the sides are nice and flat. And you can see they have the garter bump on the side. And this is just curling up a tiny bit but that's okay because I'm going to be joining it so it doesn't matter but as I said you'd want to do more rows of garter but here's how the stitch looks and the reason I named it the twisted thistle is you can see it's slightly twisted as it comes down and it does look like a kind of a thistle flower in the middle but it's a really really pretty stitch and as you can see, it's a nice tight stitch. Okay, and the other side looks like this. It's nice and smooth. And the loom hook I'm going to use today is I think I'm going to use this one and I wanted to show all of these because this is from Steve Axelrod okay and I'll give you a link to his Etsy shop I'm using this one today but I'll show you a couple of the others that I got from him so you'll know he's got a lot of variety there okay because I know in many of my videos I've used the loom hooks from We Have a Handle on this and they no longer make loom hooks. So I've, I've said you could find them on Etsy. So I've got some of Steve's here and uh, you can find them right on Etsy. And I also have one other style here that you can get on Etsy. And this is it. And this is from a different seller. Um, Touche Crochet. 
And she has crochet hooks mostly, but she does make the odd loom hook. And this is what her style looks like. So you can find her on Etsy as well. But I will leave a link to Steve's. He has he has other things besides loom hooks, pens and different things like that. But he makes a lot of loom hooks and he'll make them to order for you as well. Okay, so those are the loom hooks. I'm going to use this one today. I think this color is called abalone, if you were wondering what the color was. Okay, so whenever I'm going to the right, I'm going to do a U-wrap on my end pegs, my two pegs on each end. That's how I'm doing the garter. Whenever I'm going to the left, I'm going to do a purl. So I'm going to the right, so I'm going to do a unit, a U-wrap, another U-wrap, and then I'm ready to go into my stitch. So it's a two-row stitch. First row is my roses and chain stitch. I also have a stitch video of it. So you can look at the stitch video and I also have um, well this might this is the first pro project probably you're going to see in this stitch but I have other projects coming I really really like this stitch it's a nice tight stitch you can do all kinds of things with it and it has such a unique look and it's so easy to do okay so how to do this stitch row one Roses and chain stitch, you're going to go over the peg in a U-wrap and knit it off. You're going to come back the opposite way, knit it off, come back the way you're going, knit it off. Okay, you aren't going to want to stay pretty loose as you do this because here's what will happen. You'll do your first one. If you're too tight, you're never going to be able to get that over. You're going to pull it over like this. So you don't want to do that. So you're just going to want to knit it over and then just lay it over and hold it firm but loose. You want to keep it loose. Knit it over and then you're going to want to come back. Just lay the yarn over and knit it. Okay? So knit. Knit the opposite way. You wrap in front. You wrap in front going the right way again. And that, another thing, don't pull it too tight when you're going this way either. Same thing will happen. So you wrap. You wrap the opposite way. You wrap the way you're going. You wrap. You wrap the opposite way. You wrap the way you're going. You wrap. You wrap the opposite way. You wrap the way we're going. I'm going to pull some out there. Okay. You wrap. <laughs> you wrap the way we're going. The opposite way. And then you wrap the way we're going. So to the right. To the left and front. To the right again. And you got three stitches as you go. So this really, really grows. Now we're going to the right. So we're going to do a U-wrap on the end peg. Trying not to split the yarn. Now we're going to do a U-wrap on the other end peg. Now we're going to the left. So we're going to purl. So I'm going to put the loom hook in the loop. Scoop up the working yarn. So I have a loop here. Take the whole thing off the peg. Lay it over and tighten. Put the peg, put your uh, loom hook into the loop, scoop up the working yarn, bring the whole thing over holding on to the loop, put the loop on and tighten. That's a purl. So we purled the two pegs. Then we're going to do row two. Row two of the stitch, it's a two row stitch, is just unit or you wrap. So you just you wrap all the way across. Pretty easy, huh? And it's because we're using the you wrap it curls like this. Roses and chain on its own uh, is really easy to control and curl. But once you put you wrap in there, you're going to have to use a garter edge or rib edge or whatever kind of edge you want to do that's not going to curl. Okay. So now we're going to the left, so I'm going to do a purl.
And I'm going to purl this peg too. And now we're going to the right. So I'm going to do a unit or a U-wrap and another U-wrap. Okay. And then we're all ready to do row one again. Row one is roses and chains, working yarn over the peg, knit it off, back, knit it off, back forward again, knit it off. And I make it look really easy, and it is easy. It's only going to be hard if your tension is too hard. That makes it too hard to knit it over. You're just going to lay the yarn over, lay the yarn over, lay the yarn over. Okay, very easy stitch. So when I finish this row, we'll take a look at it and you'll see how much more work is on here from just doing two rows of this stitch. Because a row of U-wrap hardly adds on any length. <laughs> So most of the length will be because of this stitch. They can really whiz along. And we're going to the right, so I'm going to do a U-wrap. Coming back. I got a big knot in my yarn here. <laughs> it's going to put you on pause for a moment while I, oh, there, no, never mind. Never mind. I was able to do it. So now we'll do the purl. So we do a purl coming back and snug it up, purl on the next peg and snug it up. Okay, now we're just going to take a look to see how much more work we have. And as you can see, it's a lot longer. Look at that. And you can see even more what a nice stitch it is. You can see how tight it is. Very, very tight stitch. And this is not a really thick bulky. This is a thinner bulky that I'm using on a 5 8 inch loom. It's um, about as thin as a, a yarn like Barcelona from Michaels. And it's much thinner than I love this chunky yarn from Hobby Lobby or um, Charisma from Michaels. It's a thinner yarn than that. So if you were using um, Charisma or one of those types of yarns, you'd probably want to use a, a three quarter inch gauge for this stitch. But it's nice and tight, so you could you could make anything with it. And it has a lot of stretch. See, there's a lot of stretch both ways. So it's good that way, about equal both ways. And it is a fun, fast stitch to do. So there you go. You should be able to do it now. We can take another, a real good look at the edge. If you want to do the garter edge, going to look there get it in there that's slightly bumpy look but nice and tight nice tight edge it's not going to snag on anything nice tight garter edge and uh, your your ends will be looking like that of course you could do um, more end pegs you could have done three end pegs and you could have slipped the last stitch if you wanted to have that look but make sure that if you do this stitch, you do some kind of edge treatment so that you won't curl. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you really like using this stitch and have lots of fun with it. And until next time, bye.